We described the HIV life cycle and the mechanism of action of antiretroviral agents. We looked at DHHS guideline recommendations for treatment naive HIV-1 patients. We ensured adherence to Optima's ART in newly diagnosed HIV patients. Now, given an HIV patient, design an individualized monitoring plan. First, let's take a look at a few definitions. Viral separation by definition is a HIV RNA level that is below the lower limit of detection of available assays. In clinical trial, usually this is considered a viral load less than 50 copies per ml. Virologic failure is any time a viral load is actually more than 200 copies per ml. Incomplete virologic response if, is if the viral load is greater than 200 in two consecutive uh, viral loads that are separated by 24 weeks. So if you get a single level that's greater than 200, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a complete uh, virologic response. You have to look at the trend. So it could be that the viral load is greater than 200, but it's trending down. So it's important to get a second one and uh, to, to, to see if it's trending down or up. Virologic rebound is uh, when a patient has virologic suppression, but then after virologic suppression, then the viral load becomes greater than 200 copies per ml. And a virologic blip is um, once the patient gets uh, virologic suppression, then there's a single isolated detectable RNA level, and then the patient goes back to suppression. So this is uh, a quick uh, virologic blip. And of course, Low level viremia is uh, if uh, the virus the virus is actually detected so greater than 50 uh, but actually less than 200. Let's take a look at what happens uh, when we actually initiate ART. In an uninfected person who does not have HIV, a normal CD4 count is usually around 800 to 1200 cells per uh, microliter or more. In HIV-infected patients, the CD4 count starts to drop. So for most patients, it's about uh, 200 to 500. And of course, once CD4 count drops to less than 200, at that point, the patient has AIDS. Alternatively, if the percentage of lymphocytes that CD4 is 14% or less, uh, that also constitutes AIDS. Now, once we initiate ART in the first month, so within 30 days, you should suspect a two log drop in uh, viral load. So, for example, if, um, and of course, every log is you basically drop a zero. So, if the viral load is 100,000, a two log drop would be you just take out two zeros out, so it would be 1,000. So, it would, you would expect the patient to go from 100,000 to 1,000 uh, within the first month. And then three to six months, um, you should uh, have undetectable viral load because the ARTs that we currently have on the market are highly effective. Now, when it comes to CD4, within the first year, it's expected that the patients will gain about 150 to 250 uh, CD4 cells. And this levels off beyond two years. So this will not continue to go up to normal. So the goals of therapy is to have an undetectable viral load and to have CD4 count of at least 500. And that's because typically less than 500 is when opportunistic infections start to emerge, especially if it's less than 200. Let's take a look at uh, monitoring parameters for HIV. So you can see, uh, so green means that you basically need to uh, get this uh, laboratory parameter for everyone. And yellow means that uh, for some patients, you also may, uh, may need to do that. So at baseline, before we actually start uh, ART, uh, we need to check a, a viral load, a CD4 count. We also need to check HIV resistant to make sure the regimens that we choose initially the, um, you know, are actually working uh, because there's a possibility that the patient can get a resistant strain from uh, somebody else. It's important to uh, check uh, for hepatitis B serology and for hepatitis C. Uh, risk factors for getting HIV are similar to risk factors for getting hep B and hep C, so it's important to get these and treat these at the same time as HIV. Urinalysis is important for uh, monitoring the uh, renal function. So for example, you can measure the urine uh, protein as well as uh, urine um, 
uh, glucose, which normally should not be in uh, in the urine, uh, but people who have uh, renal dysfunction will have uh, glucose and uh, potentially protein uh, in the urine. So that's an easy way of monitoring renal function. And then uh, for um, more comprehensive uh, monitoring, uh, a basic metabolic uh, panel as well as liver chemistries and uh, complete blood uh, cell count uh, are needed at uh, baseline. And because HIV patients are at risk of cardiovascular disease, it's important to get a baseline fasting lipid panel and a fasting glucose or A1C uh, so that if these are abnormal, uh, they get the appropriate treatment. And if you are to use a Bacavir, you need to get the HLA B5701. If you are not using a Bacavir, this is unneeded. And tropism test is only needed if the patient is to be started on Maravarac. So if the Maravarac is not needed, uh, this test is unnecessary. And then two to eight weeks after ART is initiated, it's important to get the HIV viral load. Um, now, if the patient viral load is undetectable two to eight weeks then you can monitor it every three to uh, four months however if the viral load is not undetectable two to eight weeks it's important to continue to monitor the viral load more frequently so every four to eight weeks until it's undetectable or at least uh, is less than 200 copies per ml and then you can switch to every three to six months now, for patients who actually have uh, good adherence and they have suppressed viral load, uh, you can actually ease, make this easier and do it every six months. But that's only if the patient is adherent and the viral load at uh, this point, it was uh, suppressed. So at, at the very least, the viral load needs to be monitored every six weeks. Uh, and if the patient's treatment uh, fails, it's uh, also important to check the viral load, um, you know, and in, in fact, that's how you would know if the treatment is failing. And of course, situations were clinically indicated. For the CD4 count, once you start uh, ART, it takes about three months for the CD4 cells to increase. So it's unnecessary to get one two to eight weeks later. So typically it's recommended to wait uh, three to six months uh, to get the CD4 and this is only needed if the patient's CD4 count was low or if the viral load is undetectable otherwise if the CD4 count was already high so greater than 300 and if the viral load is uh, undetectable at two to eight weeks it's unnecessary to continue to monitor CD4 count because there will be no reason for the CD4 count to go any lower now, beyond two years, if the patient's CD4 count is still low, um, uh, if the viral load is suppressed and they are adherent, you can actually make that easier and do it every uh, 12 years or annually. And of course, anytime treatment fails, you should uh, check uh, viral load as well as the CD4 count and if uh, as clinically indicated. So clinically indicated, you know, it just depends on the situation. You have to use your judgment uh, because we couldn't possibly... Um, in, or I should say the guideline couldn't include every possible scenario. Uh, they just have, a, you know, the things that you should check uh, as clinically indicated based on clinical judgment. Uh, HIV resistance uh, is needed at baseline, but then you don't really need to do it unless the patient has treatment failure or you have some reason to believe that there is resistance. Otherwise, it's not really needed. Uh, the same with hep B and hep C, you definitely need it at baseline. Um, you know, if someone is at risk of getting Hep B or Hep C, and or especially with Hep B, if they're un unvaccinated, it's uh, good to check this annually. Your analysis that you need at baseline for renal function monitoring, you really need to get that every six months if someone is uh, on tenofovir, so either TDF or TAF, because these are nephrotoxic, it's important to get your analysis every six months. Otherwise, if someone is not on tenofovir, then you need your analysis uh, once a year or every 12, uh, 12 months and if clinically indicated. Uh, for BMP and liver chemistries, uh, you do get them at baseline and then two to eight weeks just to make sure that uh, the patient is tolerating the drugs and then every uh, three to uh, six months uh, just to make sure the, uh, the drugs are not causing any toxicity. Uh, with the complete blood count, you do it at baseline and then uh, anytime that you need to get the CD4 count, um, 
you know for example if you do need the cd4 count every three to four months you also get the cbc uh, but at the very least it's also recommended to get it every six months and if clinically indicated uh, for the fasting lipid panel and um, glucose and a1c you only need it annually so at baseline and then every 12 months unless it's if if they were abnormal at baseline so if someone's lipid panels was abnormal you should do it twice a year and the same with a1c if a1c was abnormal or glucose you should do it every three months uh hla b57 you really don't need to repeat it once you get it at baseline and that's only if you need a bulk heavier so if a bulk heavier is not in the picture you never need the hla b5701 uh, tropisome, uh, you only need it if someone is on Meravirac. If the Meravirac is not in the picture, you never need it. So uh, if you are to use Meravirac, you need it at baseline. And then if the patient has treatment failure, you need to recheck tropisome and uh, if uh, clinically need, uh, needed. Uh, you can use uh, Meravirac if the tropisome test shows uh, CCR5, um, not CXCR4. Uh,